Psalms 92. A psalm or song for the Sabbath day. Okay, so we got what this psalm is about. The end of end of the week. About maybe the Sabbath days also of a holiday. It's a praise to God song. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. So plain and simple. If you want to do good, you give thanks to God. You don't give thanks to anybody but God. And to sing praises unto thy name. And if you've taken part in any of our biblical truths of our hymns, isn't it remarkable how many hymns we sing that don't mention the name of God, Lord, and Jesus? Have you ever studied, ever, ever looked to the words, not the singing, to the words of our hymns to see and count how many times Jesus Christ? Count how many times God. All the implications there. And that's the trouble with the, with the contemporary music. Implications there, but it can also be read for something else. O Most High. Well, the God. The Lord. Jehovah. We are to give thanks to God. We are to sing praises to Him. That's a good thing. To show for thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And that's that's the morning and the evening sacrifice. There was to be a lamb sacrifice in the morning and a lamb to be sacrificed at night. The loving kindness of that lamb in the morning is to show the first advent. Of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And the faithfulness of the evening, the second coming that Jesus told the Jews, He's coming, He did, the first advent. And they rejected Him. And He's told them, I'm coming back. And He will. The loving kindness of God, for God so loved the world. And the faithfulness, faithfulness is, I'll never leave here, forsake thee. And He hasn't. And He won't. To those that are His. That's part of thanksgiving and the singing of verse 1. It's to God. The morning and the night. That's Jewish offering. First day of the week, I mean, the Sabbath, too. I believe that was the time when the, when the showbread was made and brought out. Upon instrument of ten strings, and a guitar has six. Six is the number of man in the Bible. Ten is the number of Gentiles. Upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn, that's a serious sound. And when you bring forth your musical instruments for the Lord, you don't do it haphazardly. You do it seriously. Better you not do it than not giving God your all. And that's the offering of the church aid today. I know churches out there, you got a tithe. That's that's the law. All right, just plain and simple. That's the law. God, as far as giving, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church that you give not of necessary, but you give of a willing and loving, cheerful heart. That's what you do for your musical instruments. You do it because you want it. Now, there are times, like, this morning, I got up, and I really didn't want to read the Bible. I was tired. I had an off day yesterday. You take one off day, you want to take two or three. But not that I didn't want to read the Word of God. It's just, you know, I had the love and desire for it. But, I mean, you're in a grumpy mood. You're just, you know, you're not going to give it to your all to the Lord. Don't do it. There have been times I'm reading through my Bible and say, Lord, you know, I'm not paying attention. My mind is elsewhere. 
It's one of them days, Lord. I can't go back to bed and redo it. Lord, just bring that Holy Spirit in me because I want to do it correctly. And we're about that church sometimes too. We want to, let's go to church. Amen. Glory to God. Go to church. Then there's some mornings. Oh, didn't sleep last night. Not feeling well. I'm not well enough. I can't give it to somebody, but you know, and sometimes the Lord will turn that. I mean, you're not feeling well. It's a bad day, but you're still serious. You know what the problem with worship today? No one's serious. Why are church doors closed today? No, you're not serious about serving God. Satan would have found something else for you to close the church doors. One of a billion things he could have done that the church doors are closed. You're just not serious. Because there are churches that are open and there are Christians that go and God has protected them. What do you say to that? My church doors are open. I've been at the, every single service since coronavirus and before coronavirus. And God has protected us. What do you say to that? Oh, my preacher, he does it on Facebook and he does it on YouTube and live. So does mine. So do I. I've been doing Facebook, SoundCloud, and we just started Facebook Live. It's it fairly new. But we've been doing internet ministry since 2000, uh, 2010 or 11. I've been doing it for 10 or 9 or 10 years. And I do it as an aid to help you outside listen this is not to give up on your church this is for extra this is for you to do an extra addition to your church maybe you're you're working as a security guard somewhere your, your third shift and, and you can find something with the lord here you go don't you ever dare take this ministry of the hayward family and use it oh i don't have to go to church don't you dare do that you get yourself a bible believing king james centered church and you be there. And if your church wants to close up, you get on your knees and pray to God. Say, God, I need to be fed. And why not you train up your family? Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, are you married with a wife? Then you train your family. Church doors have been closed, but not the church, the family. And there's many that have failed because the, the husbands today during coronavirus has not taken the lead in raising their family in the Lord. There should have been many, many family ministries, family altars, family Bible study, family all in all. I bet you there's only a few. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. The writer of the psalm says, God's work has made me glad. God made you glad? Has God done something in your life to make you glad? Then you're to thank him and to sing praise. Oh, it's not church day. Sabbath was not a church day. That's Saturday. We we go to church Sunday. Midweek service. You can't find something during your day, any day of the week, to praise and sing God. You can't sing God in the car. You can't thank God at the job. You can't thank God for the job. You can't be exercising at the gym thanking God. I will triumph in the works of thy hand. The work of God makes me glad. The works of his hands triumph. Victory. Victory. Where's your victory? Who, what work has got you?
Oh, Lord. That's the answer. Look at the Lord, the God. How great are thy works? So there's the answer. What What's to give you victory? What is God? And thy thoughts are very deep. You ever think about God thinking? It's kind of hard to think about God that knows everything. It's a weird language. Uh, and that God thinks. We have a God that thinks. What do you do with a dead religion where their God is dead and buried? What do you do with a uh, uh, education where the founder is dead and in the ground? Or a, or a leader of a government and he's dead and put into a, a glass cup? What do you do? They're not thinking. They're dead. What's God think about? Good, clean thoughts. How can I bless my children today? How can I make my children happy? A brutish is a beastly, stupid, that's the dictionary, that's not me. Uh, carnal, that's an interesting word, carnal, Corinthian church. The brutish man knoweth not. I mean, people out there say, oh, I know, I know, I know. And the Bible says they don't know. Well, I'm a worldly Christian. The Bible says you don't know. I don't see any problems with church and living the world. The Bible says you don't know. It's carnal, brutish, beastly, stupid. Paul says, I have you not to be ignorant, brethren. And if you are, and you have not grown. And you have spiritually, by your own choice, retarded. And I'm not making fun of those that are born. I'm talking about those who don't know anything. Because they don't want to know anything. They're ignorant. They're stupid. They're carnal. They're beastly. You don't know. And God would have us much to know from Genesis to Revelation. If you have not read your Bible, you don't know. Don't tell me you know. If you have not fully read your Bible from cover to cover, or not in the practice of right now reading your Bible from cover to cover, then you don't know. A carnal Christian won't read his Bible. Neither does a fool. What's a fool? We went through a whole study, study of fools. One fool is he says in his heart there's no God. A fool will do foolish things and folly. Neither does a fool understand this. What have we been talking about? Knowledge what? Understand what? The good thing is to give thanks unto the Lord and sing praises to the Lord. A carnal Christian will thank the President of the United States and the politicians of his of his body uh, or uh, Republican or Democrat, wherever it be. Oh, thank! Oh, how great! How wonderful my my leader is! How wonderful my party is! How great my party is! How great are the doctors and the men and women who have protected us and done their duty, which they get paid for. During coronavirus. I mean, come on. This is plain, simple fact. I'm going to put it down here. You're not going to like it. Nurses and doctors get paid for what they're doing. And I can name a whole bunch of nurses and doctors that are not doing their job during coronavirus. You haven't thanked the men and women of the sewer place to make sure you still can flush your toilet. Very few people in the world today are offering God the thanks and God the glory and the salvation of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, let's thank the people. Let's give an extra thing to those who work. How do you even know that coronavirus is real? And I'm not even going to go there. 
You better thank God that you didn't get coronavirus. You better thank God if you did get it, you you have been healed of coronavirus or you're being taken care of of coronavirus. And you better prepare for the next wave, according to the book of Exodus, the next wave of judgment is going to be placed upon the world by God for not repenting of coronavirus. I mean, who are you listening to? You listening to the preachers or you listen to the media? Are you opening your Bible or you listen to politicians? I got one source of the King James 1611 Bible. I, I listen to these people. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Well, if you wear a mask, it, 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 you know, it's more healthy. Well, if you don't wear a mask, it, it's, it's just as healthy. Are you spreading the bad, terrible news of the media and the politicians? Or are you spreading the good news of Jesus Christ? He's able to save your soul. What are you doing? The wicked spring as, as the grass with all the praising of God. With all the glory of God that there are people who love to God, give God all the credit, thank the Lord, and wonderful God, and go to church and serve the Lord, serve the Lord at home, serve the Lord at work, serve, <coughs> serve the Lord in their car. But there are wicked people all around. Jesus said one time, he said, the father went out and, and, and sold the wheat. Next thing you know, somebody sold terror. And the angel was like, well, do we go out and gather the wheat? He said, no, wait for it all to grow. And then when it comes to the time of the end, then we'll, we'll pick the whole harvest and separate it. You wait for a worldwide revival. You can't even get a revival in a Christian's heart. One Christian. Very rare. And when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, The world is in a turmoil. Christianity is down. And yet sin, sinner, and those that have sin are going to go on the rise. Listen, we know that the next great event is called the rapture. And after that, seven years of Jacob's trouble is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And the plagues are going to get worse and worse and worse. And men are not going to repent. Revelation says it. Christians are worried about the mark and the 666. When the Bible tells them, you don't need to worry about that. You'll be gone before, the, unless you're not a Christian. I ain't worried about the mark. They make it mandatory. I got to get a shot for something. And it has the mark of the beast in it. And put it in my arm if I got to do it. The Bible says, you know, uh, obey the government. It would not be against the Bible because the 666 has nothing to do with my life. And when the rapture happens and my body's left, it'll be here with the, all the goo and the blood and the guts and the mark of the beast, which will have no, no good for me. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. They're going to come. They're going to hear the gospel. They're going to reject the gospel. And they're going to die and they're going to end up in hell. You better be the one that has told them about the good gospel of Jesus Christ. And not, oh, did you know that, you know, the coronavirus, this amount of people are dead. And you, know, you ought to wear a mask. You ought to have gloves. You ought to wash your hands. You ought to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Which one you tell them? Which news do you behold to lost and dying people? Wash your hands, wear a mask, or believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. I've only wore a mask during this time one time so far. And that's the doctor's office I had to go. And they asked me kindly, would you wear it? I wear it. I have nothing against with a mask. If, you, if that's what it be, so be it. I have no trouble. But what are you telling the wicked people? You tell them coronavirus or the, or the, the murdering hornets? Or you tell them about Jesus Christ? No, the newspaper said, the, the news, the media channel said, oh, the Democrats said. No, what did God say? 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But thou, Lord, besides the, the wicked doers, besides the evil, but thou, Lord, are most high forevermore. Dead men are going to go off in the lake of fire that burns forever to second death, and God will live on. And those that are children of God, those that are part of God, we will live with God forever also in New Jerusalem. Oh, we're going to get a virus. Oh, we're going to get sick. Oh, we're going to go to a place as Christians will never get sick, never have sorrow, no more pain. God will wipe away our tears. We don't have to worry about any more health problems. we got the perfect health plan coming up. God says, I'll take care of all the health. I'll get rid of all sickness, all pain, all sorrow, no more death, a brand new body. I'll wipe your tears away. That's coming by God. Well, what if you get coronavirus? Then I'm going to end up probably in the hospital and drop dead and be absent from the body and presence of the Lord. You know why you're, because you probably don't have that same hope. You probably don't believe in Jesus Christ. You probably don't trust God. You need to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you are saved, you're carnal. You need to come out of carnality and you need to get in the Bible. Fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Ooh, I think I know what Saturday's message is going to be at the farmer's market. For lo. Thy enemy. See that? The loving God has enemies. If God is all low. <laughs> What's he doing having enemies? Everybody's going to go to heaven. His enemies? You don't think. You stink. Oh Lord. For lo, thy enemies shall perish. Why? What's the enemy of God? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on them should not perish but have everlasting life. He that has not the son shall not see life but the wrath of... What are the enemies of God? Those that rebel against God. Those that go against what, <coughs> what God has said. They deny the scripture. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. I'm going to party in hell with my... Anyway. Where are you going to plug the stereo in? There's no electricity in hell. But my horn, a symbol of strength in the Bible. Shalt thou exalt, make lift it up. Like the horn of a unicorn. Oh... Do that. The Bible says unicorn. We can't believe the Bible. There's no such thing as a unicorn. And what are your fairy tales and your goblin stories? What what do they have? A unicorn. What is the unicorn? I got the perfect answer for you. Are you ready? The one horned animal. Hey, hey. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. That's what they did with the priest. That's what they did with the king. Do you know where that fits for the Christian? Though this is a song written for the, Revelation 1 says, I made you priests and kings. Have you not got this unction from the Holy Spirit? Somehow God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ is going to anoint us Christians for the priestly office, which we got now. It's not the Father, it's probably Hayward. And for the kingly office, if I get the inheritance in the millennium. That horn was a vessel used to carry fresh olive oil. Or oil olive. I can never get how the Bible says it. Oil olive. Only the world would have you say olive oil. But the Bible says oil olive. Get it right. My eye also shall see my desires upon my enemy. Old Testament, his enemies go to hell. What's it for the Christian? Man, we pray, we pray for those that are against. We want them to get saved. I got an enemy at the farmer's market. Every DJ that comes is trying to stop the gospel. I pray against his instruments and his microphones. But I don't pray against his soul. 
he's an enemy of the gospel. What do I pray for him? And he gets saved. You know what the enemy of the gospel is today, according to Paul? The Jews. The Jews were an enemy of the gospel through the book of Acts. And Paul says, pray for them. Witness to them. Don't you ever curse a Jew. And my ears shall hear my desire of the wicked. The wicked. I always thought that's only the wicked. That's also the Antichrist. That rise up against me. That's the Antichrist. What would be the desire of Old Testament, New Testament people who've got an enemy and they're the children of God? Lord, take them down. Let their reign of their authority over me end and it will happen. The righteous shall flourish like the wicked. Look at verse 7. That's enlarge, increase, and go and growth. Well, I pray to God that the enemies and the people who are against them are against me. I pray that God would get rid of them. It's not what the scriptures say. Scriptures say they're going to grow. They're going to be part. They're going to be looking just like the wheat. Until the day of the harvest. Like a palm tree. And for us Christians, it's a fibrous tree. You ever ask yourself, well, how come palm trees can survive hurricanes? And I've seen the inside of a palm tree. And that thing is fibrous. It's not like a tree up north where I come from. That palm tree has got fiber, almost like if you ever seen your, the cereals that got fiber, and they're just embedded with each other. They're just it's sewn together by God, and that's a mighty powerful tree. And God says the righteous are like that. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon, and Lebanon was known for the cedars. A cedar tree, when you cut it, smells good. Keeps some of the moths out. You can go to the store and buy cedar and hang it in your closet and to protect from moths. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. There was nothing planted in the house of God. Now Solomon had palm trees, uh, like a wallpaper design in the in the uh, oracle and in the house, but there was nothing planted. There was the table showbread with twelve loaves of bread. There was a candlestick, which had oil, olive, oil of olive. It had twelve lamp, uh, seven, seven lamps. It had the altar incense. And then in the, the Holy of Holies, you had the, the Ark, you had the Mercy Seat, and the Cherubim. The only ones that went into that, to those places were the priests. I don't know what the implication here is. I mean, if you talk about the priests, the righteous... Or is he looking above and seeing the book of Revelation say, you know what? The heaven, the heaven, capital H, is the same as the tabernacle down here and the temple down here. And we'll be planted in heaven. And when we're planted in heaven, you're not going to ever pull us up. They shall still, still bring forth fruit in old age. That's what God desires for every Christian. Fruit. They shall be fat. Hey, there's a verse for being fat. They shall be fat. And flourishing. Well, you want a Bible word to be fat? There it is. 
And it's funny because high priest Eli was a fat man, the Bible says. But he lived on the lasciviousness and the greatness of the ministry. And didn't care what his sons would do. I don't think it's obese. I think, you know, our the flesh is full. Our life is full. The blessings are full. The, thanks, the thanksgiving to God is full. The praise of God is full. The loving everything of God and his attributes and of the Christian and those that are children of God. It's just full to the fullest. And it grows more. A Christian ought to be out there witnessing to try to get more. And when he witnesses and somebody gets saved, that's to go out and get more and more fruit. And he had to go out and get more and more fruit. And praying. I ought to be praying not only for myself, but those in my church. And they're to be praying for me and we pray for people outside the church. I got people in the list of my prayers. I don't know who they are. I'll probably never meet them. But they are names and special people of, of, the, of the brethren I go to church with. And their cares for pray as I tell them, hey, they've got people in their prayer list of mine. They'll never meet. Or probably will I'll never meet. To show that the Lord is upright. Fruit-bearing Christians show that God is right. Now, how are you when you don't bear fruit? Read the scriptures. He is my rock. Paul says that rock is Jesus. There is no unrighteousness in him. Holy and true. That's Jesus. The rock. Paul says it's Jesus. No unrighteousness in him. Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Paul says, without sin. Peter said, without sin. See the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D? Go tell the Jehovah Witnesses to take a jump in the lake. Because that Lord is Jesus Christ right there. Plain and simple. 